Hello everyone, welcome to Confidence Intervals for the mean day three. Uh, what we're going to talk about today is the difference between uh, the T interval and the Z interval. And in the last couple of videos, I've shown you how to calculate a confidence interval for the mean uh, using the calculator. And uh, you might have noticed in the test menu when we go down, there's this thing called a Z interval. Um, and we're going to actually talk about what that is today and compare it to the T interval. Um, so T interval versus Z interval, right? So remember the T interval uh, is what we use when we do not know what the population standard deviation is. So we have to make that substitution with the sample standard deviation. Now in very rare cases, there, there may be times when we actually do know what these, uh, what the population standard deviation is. And in that case, that's when we would use the Z interval. But then, uh, you know, I, I, it's, it's a rare day that you're ever gonna use the Z interval. I, I don't understand the point of estimating a mean for a population when you already know it. So it's just, it's very rare that you're ever gonna be in a situation where you use the Z interval and the, the point of using a Z interval uh, is lost on me. So, uh, but whatever, it's part of the required content that I gotta show you. So I'm gonna show you the difference between the two and you need to be on the lookout uh, for the differences in these problems. So if you do run into a problem where they tell you, hey, the population standard deviation is this number, we know this thing, that's your cue that you need to use the Z interval instead of the T interval, okay? So make sure you're reading those problems very carefully uh, when you do them so you know which one to use, all right? So we're gonna, we're gonna use this problem that I have here to highlight the differences uh, between the two. And uh, we're gonna be estimating the mean mass of pennies using a very small sample of, of penny weights that we have here. Okay, so we're looking at these guys. We've got 10, 10 weights of pennies here, and uh, we're gonna use this to estimate the population mean, okay? And the way I'm gonna set this up as in this left-hand column, we're gonna, we're gonna proceed like we did the last couple of days where we do not know the population standard deviation. So this is the column where we're gonna use the T interval. And then over here, we're gonna say, okay, let's say we did know the population standard deviation and it's 0.02 grams. And then we're gonna carry on with the problem with that piece of information. And this is where we would use the Z interval and we'll get to see a side-by-side -side comparison of the process. So that'll be good so that you know what the difference is, okay? Um, so what I did to start this off is I just, I took these 10 weights and I put them in my calculator. So I went to uh, stat edit and I put the 10 weights of the pennies in here. And then the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna run a one bar stats. And this will give me my point estimate. Oops, enter, enter, there we go. And so we run it and we see our sample mean is 2.49 and our sample standard deviation is 0 0.0163. Okay, so I'm gonna write those two things down. Uh, we've got 2.49 and 0 0.0163. And that is our uh, sample standard deviation. Remember our sample size here was 10. We'll, we'll need that a little bit later on. Okay. So I'm gonna move on, right? So I'm gonna start calculating all those important things that I need to build my confidence interval. The first thing that we need is my point estimate, uh, which we are gonna use the sample mean for. So we've got 2.49 as our point estimate. We're gonna calculate the standard error. And since we don't know what the population standard deviation is, we're gonna use the sample standard deviation. So I'm gonna take 0 0.0163, and I'm gonna divide it by the square root of 10. That's the calculation that I would do. Uh, you could use your calculator to do that. And if you do, you should get 0.005. Okay. So that will be our standard error. Okay. Then critical value, since we're using a T distribution here, we're gonna use an inverse T, an inverse T. And remember our confidence level was 90% for this problem. So that means the area in each tail is gonna be 0 0.05. So I'm gonna tell it that the area to the left here is 0 0.05. And since our sample size was 10, the degrees of freedom is going to be nine. It's always one less. And I go to my calculator and I'm gonna calculate that inverse T. So we go second VARS. 
inverse t, we've got 0 0.05, and then degrees of freedom is 9. And we'll run that calculation. We've got uh, 1.833. So remember, it's going to be a plus and a minus for these critical values. So 1.833. And I do believe most of the problems in my open math, if they ask you to calculate a critical value, they only want you to report the positive one. So make sure you read the directions on that. All right, so for the margin of error, to calculate the margin of error, I would multiply the standard error by the critical value. So I'd multiply these two values. All right, so I would take uh, margin of error equals 0 0.005, and then multiply that by 1.833. And if I do that calculation correctly, I should get a 0 0.009. Nine. Okay, so then to construct my uh, confidence interval here, I would start with my point estimate. I would take 2.49, and I would do plus or minus whatever the margin of error is, so that'd be 0 0.009. And then we could report it the other way as well, so we could report it as an interval or as an inequality, but I'm going to use my calculator to get the interval part here. And there is going to be a slight discrepancy between uh, what I get in the calculator and what I got here just because of intermediate rounding. So uh, don't don't think you got it wrong, right? Just just remember there, when we do these problems by hand, we have some intermediate rounding that we got to take care of. All right, so I'm going to go to stat tests, and we're going to use T interval here. Since we made that substitution with the standard deviation. And I'm going to use the data feature. I've already got my information in list one, and my confidence level is 0 0.9. So just go ahead and hit enter. And there we go. So we got 2.4805. And then the other one was 2.4995. And okay. the nice thing about the calculator is that it doesn't do any intermediate rounding like we did when we did it by hand. So these are going to be uh, super precise uh, for the interval here. So this is really nice uh, to be able to use the calculator for that. So the calculator input that we used there was the T interval. And that's how we got that. And again, we use that when this is not the population standard deviation. When we do not know what the population standard deviation is, we use T interval. Okay, so now let's back up. Right, we're going to back up here, and now we're going to pretend that we do know the population standard deviation and that it's 0.02 grams. All right, so point estimate. We need the same exact thing. Right, so point estimate is still going to be 2.49. We get the point estimate from our sample. All right, our standard error, and this is where things get a little different. Okay, we're not going to be substituting in the sample standard deviation. We know the population standard deviation, so I'm going to take 0.02 and divide that by the square root of 10. And you're, you're probably thinking, well, there's not really much difference between 0 0.016 and 0 0.02. In fact, if I were to round this, I would get 0 0.02, but there is a, a slight discrepancy in the number, okay? So if I do 0 0.02 divided by square root of 10, I get 0 0.006. <laughs> Again, not a whole lot of difference between these two numbers, but it is still a difference. Then we go to calculate our critical value, and this is another big difference that we'll see here because we're using the population standard deviation. We don't have to use the t-distribution. We can just use the regular old normal distribution. So instead of doing an inverse t, we're going to do an inverse norm. Okay? And it's going to want to know what the area in one of your tails is, so we're going to tell it 0.05. And we're going to use the standard normal distribution, so we'll say 0, 0,1 for the mean in the standard deviation here, and then we'll go to our calculator and run that calculation. So let's see what we got. So I'm gonna go second distribution, inverse norm, 0 0.05, and then zero and one's already in there. On that, and we got plus or minus 1.645 if we round. Right, and you can see the difference in the critical values uh, between those two problems. Okay, and this is if we don't know that population standard deviation, much more accurate than just going with this critical value. Okay, so that's why William Gossett liked this. It was much more accurate, especially for small sample sizes like this, where we only have uh, ten values. 
So you see a big discrepancy between, uh, well, I mean, not really big, but 1.8 and 1.6 in, in statistical uh, sciences, that's a big difference, okay? Uh, so let's see what happens when we calculate our margin of error. So I'm gonna multiply 0 0.006 and 1.645 to get my margin of error. And if you multiply that correctly, you should get 0 0.00987. So this becomes our margin of error. And again, not, not a whole lot different than the margin of error we had from the t-distribution, just that 0 0.87, I think, is the difference there. Uh, and then we would construct our, uh, our confidence interval. So I'm going to do 2.49, that's my point estimate, plus or minus my margin of error, so 0 0.00987. And then I'll do the interval part on the calculator like I did last time. So I'll set up my interval here. And I'm going to go back to my calculator. And this time, instead of doing the T interval, I'm going to do the Z interval. Right? Because we did not make that substitution. So we're using the normal distribution. So we're going to go uh, data again. Hit enter. And then we need to tell it what the standard deviation is. And I already, I already have that inputted here. So 0.02 was the population standard deviation. And then we tell it where our data is. So we're gonna use list one, don't mess with the frequency, and then 0.9, calculate. And we got uh, 2.4796. And then we got uh, 2.5004. There it is. That's without any of the inter intermediate rounding that we did up here. So this is this is our uh, proper Z interval. And if we compare it to what we got with the T interval, you see very slight discrepancies in the numbers here. Um, so not a big difference, but you can see the difference in the numbers there. And uh, what statisticians used to do until uh, William Gossett from Guinness uh, created the student's t distribution is they would just do this. Uh, they would just put that 0.163 in there, calculate the standard error, and they would just use inverse norm instead of using the inverse t to calculate that critical value, and that would be the difference in the calculations. And like I said, it doesn't seem like a whole lot, but when you're a company that mass produces like millions or billions of things, every slight discrepancy in each individual product that you make starts to add up and it adds up to millions of dollars. So these, these little adjustments that people make in these statistical tests could be the difference you know, in, in millions of dollars of materials wasted or lost. So that's why they do it, okay? So we've got uh, the calculator input that we use here was the Z interval. So hopefully that kind of that gives you a good comparison and contrast uh, between the, the, the two methods there. So again, just be on the lookout for problems that give you the population standard deviation. If they give it to you, you've got to do what we did here. Use inverse norm and use a Z interval instead of using inverse T and T interval. Okay. All right. Last problem I need to show you here is uh, estimating the sample size problem. This is very similar to the estimating the sample size problem that we did with the proportions. The only difference is the standard error, right? How we calculate the standard error is different uh, when we do it for a mean, okay? So we use this formula instead of the other one for proportions that we had before, which was the P times one minus P over N all inside of the square root. So we're not using that one for this problem. We're using uh, this calculation for the standard error, which is the uh, standard error for the sampling distribution of means, okay? So if I read the problem carefully here, it says we want to limit the margin of error for our 95% confidence interval to 25 points. So this is the margin of error that we want to have. So you can actually set the margin of error that you want and then collect the sample size necessary to get that margin of error. It's a really cool trick and engineers use it all the time so that they don't have to collect a sample any bigger than what they have to. It saves time, it saves money. So this is a pretty uh, common skill amongst uh, engineers and, and uh, scientists that use uh, this type of statistics, okay? So I'm gonna plug that 25 in for the margin of error. And then our critical value uh, for a 95% confidence interval is 1.96, okay? 
And uh, again, the way that, the way that we calculate that is using an inverse norm. So we would do an inverse norm with uh, 0.025 in the tails, right? Because there's 5% between the two tails. Uh, so that gives you 2.5% in each one. And that's where that 1.96 would come from, okay? And then our standard error, right? We're gonna take the population standard deviation, which they give me here, 300, and we're gonna divide it by the square root of n. So make that a little bit neater. So this is the, this is the setup that we're working with, okay? So we're trying to figure out what the sample size is, and that is what n represents. So this becomes an equation where we want to get n by itself, right? So at this point, once you get everything set up, it's just simple algebra from here, getting the, the, the lone variable by itself by moving things from side to side. And okay? so I'm going to draw my line. I'm going to start moving things. So I'm going to start by dividing by 1.96. On both sides, the 1.96s will cancel. So all that's left over here is a 300 over root n. And then if I take 25 and divide it by 1.96, I'll get 12.7551. You can use your calculator to get that. Um, so at this point, what I like to do, I like to put this over 1 and then cross multiply. So I'll get uh, 300 equals 12.7551 times the square root of n. And then I will keep going here because I want to get that n by itself. So I'm going to divide both sides by 12.7551. So those cancel. And we're left with the square root of n over here. And then when I divide those two, I'll get 23. 0.52. All right. So now all I have to do is get rid of that square root, and we'll do that by squaring both sides, just like that. So the square and the square root cancel. Ends now all by itself. Then I go to my calculator and I do 23.52 squared, and we should get uh, 553.19, and then we would round that up. We always round that up to 55. So this would be the sample size that we need to get ourselves a margin of error of 25 points on the SAT test. All right, so that's it. That's, uh, that's all the content that we have uh, for this week. What I would do at this point is I would take a look at the uh, practice problem worksheet that I posted in there. It should be a blank one that you can download. Uh, and it's got a jumble of problems. So it's got problems of all different sorts on it. Uh, and you need to determine what strategy or what distribution or what technique to use uh, to solve that problem. So I'd run through those, see which ones you can do on your own, uh, and then download the key and take a look and see how you did. If there were some problems that you were just completely drawing a blank on and didn't know how to do, uh, make sure you go back and study those or uh, schedule a time with me and we can go over those together. Make sure that you understand it before you get to the quiz. All right, guys, uh, have a great day and uh, good luck on your quiz and your homework.